So this is still technically a unit conversion question, but it has a bit of a twist. And there are a couple of ways to do this. We could still use the table method, um, but this is a case where you might just be able to set up a simple uh, set of ratios, simple proportion, because we're only really converting the density in, in a one-to-one -one kind of way. There's not a bunch of different unit conversions going on here, right? So some of you are also gonna panic right from the start. You're gonna be like, oh my God, I don't know the formula for density. I didn't realize this was a science test. I thought this was just math. I don't know this formula. I can't do this. Ah, okay, relax. The units tell you the formula. Density is kilograms per cubic meter, right? So when we write this density as 353, write the units. Kilograms per means we can divide, if it's a ratio that we're setting up, use a fraction, per cubic meter. So one cubic meter, right? So it's two units, and whenever we have two units, we can create it as a little bit of a fraction. That's what we're doing here. And then they give us one of those units. Uh, a sample of this type of wood is in the shape of a cube and has a mass of 345 kilograms. Now, I don't know its volume, right? That's the thing. And we can solve for that. That's not exactly what they're asking for in the question. But if we set up a ratio, it makes sense to do that because we can see that there's a, an equation here. There's one piece missing from that equation, an x. Whenever you've got that, it probably makes sense to just solve for x, see what you get. So in order to do that, we're gonna cross multiply. So um, I'll do it the long way. You could probably shortcut this if you need, but 353X is equal to 345. And I guess I should have pointed out, notice how the reason we know that our ratio is correct is it's the same units on the tops and the bottoms, right? Kilograms, kilograms, meters cubed, meters cubed, right? Same units. So let's divide by 353, divide by 353. We get X is equal to, calculator time, 345 divided by, oh my God, my handwriting is very bad today. 353 is 0.9773. How deep do I need to go here? Well, look at these answer choices. They're really, really, really close together. This is very unusual for an SAT question. They sometimes force us to round, but it's very rare for a multiple choice question to have this level of like closeness for rounding. So I'm really nervous. That's kind of pretty much what they're testing on this question. So now we can get to what they're actually asking, right? So some of you are probably gonna pick A here because you think you're done and you're just gonna use that seven to round to a 0.98 and you'll be done. But no, that's not what they want. They want the, um, the length to the nearest meter, hundredth of a meter, what is the length of one edge of the sample? So notice the units, X was meters cubed, right? This is the wrong unit. We have meters cubed, but they're asking for just a regular old meter. So what, this is where this becomes more of a geometry question, right? We have a cube and we just found the volume of this cube is 0 0.9773. So the volume of a cube is equal to the side squared. So uh, let's just do it as, um, I hate S's, they always look like five. So let's just do it as um, T or it's not squared, cubed, T cubed. And so we need to take the cubed root of everything here to um, get that. So this is where I would still go to the calculator, but de now Desmos might be a little bit more helpful. I just want to use it to show you how to find some of these weirder buttons. So if I want to take the cube root of a number, uh, I believe if I go to funk, funks right there, I think it's all the way at the bottom. Yep, there it is. N uh, root X or whatever is kind of what it said. So the third root of, and now we put 0.9773. And notice that that number was changing as I was adding digits there, right? So if I kind of rounded too early, I might get a different answer. This is 0.992, so that would lead me to choice B, which is the answer, but I am gonna back up a second. I just wanna double check it. If I go back to 997, it's 992. Yeah, 97, it's, it's uh, boy, uh, if I did 0.8, Okay, it's still nine. I'm just curious here how much rounding would affect things, but it's a good example of like uh, a good rounding strategy is if they're asking for something to be the nearest hundredth, you should go, I would say, two extra spaces beyond that in any intermediate step that you do, right? So that's why they were asking for hundredths, but notice that would have been this, this first seven, and yet I wrote it to the three. I'm being conservative here. I'm trying to make sure that I don't lose some number in the rounding because these answer choices make it really clear that if I lose something, if I round too early, I might end up with the wrong answer. So you gotta be really, really careful of that. Um, but hopefully 
a lot of le good things were learned here. Um, just pay attention to the units. Anytime they bring up units in the question, just pay attention to them. It's not necessarily filler, especially if they're asking you to convert things. But also don't be afraid of things like density or speed or any of these things where you feel like you need a formula. The units are the formula right? Grams, uh, kilograms per cubic meter. That's a formula telling you, you can relate the kilograms to the cubic meters as a fraction. So we just use a regular ratio here because there was only that one conversion, but I think it's really important. A lot of people panic when they see density. It's not a big deal.